Hi, and welcome to the channel. The first project that we're going to be doing here, uh, the objective is to create a recurrent neural network that runs Super Mario Kart. Uh, I got the inspiration to do this uh, from a YouTuber. His, na his channel name is Seth Bling. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. Uh, he had he created one of these recurrent neural networks uh, titled Mari Flow, and uh, I downloaded his code, uh, but realized that I couldn't run it. Uh, I don't have NVIDIA hardware, so we're going to be recoding a lot of the stuff ourselves uh, in order to get it to work. We're going to be using Google Colab uh, notebooks uh, so that we can access the KuNet um, library, so that we can train uh, our network using uh, NVIDIA's CUDA technology. Uh, so without further ado, let's look at the screen here. So BizHawk is the emulator that we're going to use to run this application. So let me explain what we have so far and what the basic structure of how this works is. So the emulators here, um, it's really nice to work with an, uh, this emulator because it allows easy access to the RAM address value pairs which is basically the, the basis of how almost all computing works. So you can look at the specific values of the game that you want to look at. So if we open up the ROM here, it opens up. So these are the de uh, the settings that I just breathed through right there are the defaults that we're going to use throughout. We're going to use Mario 50cc um, Mushroom Cup single player. Now I wrote this script, this capture script, um, myself. It's called HCAP, and I'll go over how it works, and we'll open it up. We'll look at it in a bit. So it's a status stop. We start, click here, and then keep going. So basically, I have it right. Um, you can see it opened up uh, the file name right here, which is basically uh, it's just named after the time where we started initializing the file. Boom, and we just finished a race. So one cool thing, uh, the way I have this set up is, uh, let's look at a RAM watch here. So this is what I was talking about earlier. So basically I can tell whether the game is uh, in session or not based off of this RAM value, which is uh, determines the lap count. So take this number here and subtract 128, and that's the lap you're on. Uh, if it's 133, that means the game is over. So if we cycle through the, uh, the scoreboard here and get to the next race you should see this RAM value change 127 which means we're on lap negative one or the race hasn't started yet and as you can see here the moment we cross boom 128 that means we're the game is in session and the script is writing down is, is capturing the not only the screen but also my inputs so those things that you see next to the frame counter right there uh, B is the uh, SNES input for gas. I'm using Z. Uh, all of that stuff will be covered in a bit too. Say we're done capturing the game with the script. We just hit stop uh, and close the Lua console. Close the game too because we're not going to use it in a bit. We go to Lua capture and then it writes down all the stuff we just did. Okay, so say we want to see what we captured. So we'll go ahead and open this, uh, what we just wrote, with Adam. Uh, Notepad will work too, but I noticed that Adam is better at handling these large uh, text files. Notepad tends to crash. So as you can see here, we wrote NGP. Uh, NGP stands for not gameplay. Uh, I told, uh, based off of the RAM value that uh, we can read from the emulator, basically if it was uh, the lap was negative one or it was over five. I told the game to write NGP uh, Else it would start writing this so as you can see here This is actually not an array although it is in array form. It's technically a string uh, but it's uh, representative of uh, an array with two subarrays uh, This first array here 
is uh, basically the input of the screen. So uh, it's information about uh, what values the different um, places on the screen have. So like zeros indicate dirt, negative 1.5 may indicate uh, like uh, road, stuff like that. And then the very last five here, these are the inputs that I have. So if we open up the script that I wrote, here it is. So these are the different button names. Uh, we use Z for gas, X for uh, using the item, right arrow, left arrow, and C for the power slide and jump thing. So each one of those is written here. Uh, this is the, basically the main engine of the code. Uh, you basically need to, if the game is gameplay, uh, then you basically record the screen and get the inputs. Uh, this code, this dumping and stringifying stuff is just uh, a weird workaround that I use. Uh, to format uh, the Lua tables into uh, array type strings so it's easier to process when I convert them back with Python. Uh, so yeah, or if it's not gameplay then we just write not gameplay as explained before. So that's pretty much what we have so far. Um, I have right now about, this is about three hours, uh, aggregated hours of training data. This Python script right here, I'll open it up. This Python script right here is not completely done, but basically uh, the point of it is to basic, uh, have every single one of your text files, you just copy paste the name into like a, an array of strings. And it, the point is to dump a pickle uh, of all of the arrays put together. And then the pickle data will be put into Google Colab uh, where we'll create uh, the neural network. So there is a lot more processing to be done. Uh, we'll, we're working with time series data, obviously, because uh, the game runs at 60 frames per second. That means the data is being captured at 60 hertz as well. So we're gonna have to uh, sort out the time series data uh, once we have it in Google Colab, or we can do it before, before we dump it. So this, stu this type of stuff is what we're working on right now. Uh, if this series gets enough support, I'll consider uh, putting it all on GitHub and letting you guys try for yourselves. Um, but yeah, if you like what's going on so far, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Uh, and hope to see you again. Thank you.